Good evening, church. I hope and pray that you've had a great week thus far, and I pray that the rest of your week will be blessed by God as well. Um, it is Wednesday, which means it is time for Wisdom on Wednesdays, or short for, for WOW. And uh, we continue our study through the book of Proverbs. I told you last week I wasn't quite sure how we were going to do this. Uh, but, but it's been decided that I'll continue these lessons. Um, and I will post them on Facebook. But ultimately, it'll probably just take you to, to our U YouTube page. Um, find that. Just, just search in YouTube for Panhandle Church of Christ. There you'll also find our, our live streaming from, from Sunday and, and maybe from Wednesdays as well. Um, you'll find past sermons that I've done during this time as well as maybe some singing and, and some communion thoughts and, and whatnot. So if you're interested in any of that, just, just go to YouTube, search Panhandle Church of Christ. You can actually subscribe to the channel, and it will give you the option, I believe, to be notifi notifi notifications, to be notified, yes, notified if, if there is a new video to to be watched, or maybe if there's a live one that, that is going on at the time. I'm kind of excited a little bit because um, this evening, uh, here in Panhandle, we're actually going to start uh, meeting again on Wednesday nights, not quite doing what we normally do uh, with having a meal together at 6 o'clock and then Bible classes for the kids at 7 and, and a devotional time for the adults at that time as well. We're not quite ready yet to, to put kids in a classroom and, and have them uh, in close proximity to each other, should we say. Uh, so tonight, at least, we're starting off in the auditorium where we can spread out and have a time of singing, a uh, time of prayer, uh, maybe even a congregational meeting to talk about any concerns, ideas that, that anybody might have. So I'm glad you're with me. Uh, turn your Bibles, Proverbs chapter 4. We're going to finish out the chapter tonight in our study. And I want us to really pay attention to, to some of the things that, that the proverb writer is, is getting across to us here because he's going to refer to different body parts uh, for us in these verses. He's going to be talking about the lips, the eyes, the heart, uh, the ears, the mouth, the feet, uh, our flesh. And so I think that he's, he's going to take all those and, and, and kind of intertwine them uh, to maybe give the idea a little bit about whenever we are dealing with wisdom and walking along the path of wisdom, it takes everything that we have. It is a full body effort uh, to stay on the path of righteousness and to seek out wisdom and to use wisdom. And so that is something important for us that are maybe a little older to understand, but also especially for the younger generation. That seems like the proverb writer is, is really addressing these things too for, for them to learn. Notice verse 20. Uh, we see this right away. It says, My son, be attentive to my words. Incline your ear to my sayings. And so here's the first body part. The ears. I want you to listen to my words. I want you to incline your ear to my sayings. Um, I'm not quite sure where the saying came from. I've heard different people use it. I have, have used it myself. But the saying goes that there is a reason that God gave us two ears but only one mouth. Maybe he wants us to listen twice as much as he wants us to be talking uh, for a preacher. Maybe that's a hard thing to grasp sometimes. But listening is an important skill. It is something that God wants us to do, and especially when we're trying to obtain wisdom. It is so important that we listen to the words of God. But also think about the current climate that we find ourselves in as a country. Uh, with the things that have been going on the past week, the past week and a half, how much better would our country be? How much better would our world be if we listened more? And there was less talking. And, and I'm not just talking about talking this way, but talking this way and, and this way and, and in whatever ways you talk uh, on a device. There's many different ways that we can talk. All right. Um, 
I'm having technical difficulties with my phone, uh, apparently, this afternoon. Uh, this is at least my fourth take of this video, and uh, I get so far along in the video, and then my my phone just decides to stop the video and switch to camera mode uh, to where I can take a picture, which I, I, I don't want to take a picture of myself. Um, I, I really want to try to finish this lesson. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these videos, I'm going to piece them together. So if it looks like they're kind of jumbled up and kind of crazy, and, and, and I have this conversation in the middle of the lesson, I, you understand what's going on. But um, hopefully this issue can get worked out. I don't know how many times it's going to do this to me, but uh, we'll, we'll try to get, get through this. And hopefully... Uh, after I piece it all together, uh, maybe it won't be such a big deal. Maybe you'll just see a little, a little uh, glimpse of like, huh, something strange happened right there. But uh, you'll understand what's, what's going on maybe a little bit. Okay, so back to the text. Um, look at verse 21 with me. Proverb writer says this. He says, let them not escape from your sight. Keep them within your heart okay so so he's referring to uh his sayings okay uh to to wisdom let them not escape from your sight so 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 now we're talking about eyes had been talking about ears but now we're talking about sight now okay how important is it for us to see what is truly going on um in our world in the church uh in our lives Okay, um, here the proverb writer encourages the young and says, don't let them escape. Okay, uh, pay attention to what is going on. Pay attention to these sayings. Don't lose sight of them. Don't get distracted by the world. Don't, don't uh, as, as my wife is famous for saying, uh, she is, is it ADD? Attention deficit disorder. Yeah, uh, you know, sometimes she has a hard time concentrating on things. And I forget which movie it's in, but there's, 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 it's a cartoon movie. I'm not sure if it's Dis Disney or what it is, but anyway, uh, I think it's the dog is talking. And then he goes squirrel uh, and gets distracted because a squirrel runs by in, in the middle of his thought. And, and sometimes that happens to my wife. Uh, maybe sometimes that happens to to us as well. Okay, and we're going along the path of wisdom, and, and we think we are gaining it and, and using it and having understanding, and, and all of a sudden there's something that happens. We go, squirrel, and, and we get distracted. And, and then here's the proverb writer saying, let them not escape from your sight. He says, keep them within your heart. Okay, here's the third one, the heart. And we're going to talk a little bit more about the heart uh, in a couple couple of verses down. So, so I'm going to save that for just a little bit. But he says, keep them within your heart. A uh, place that, that you keep things that are important to you. Okay, that, that, that place that, that's at the center of, of who you are. Keep them there because they're precious to you. Don't let them escape from your sight. Notice verse 22 with me. For they are life to those who find them in healing to all their flesh, okay? Here's, here's number four. Is that how many we're up to now? Four, yes. Uh, the flesh, for they are life to those who find them, okay? The sayings of the wise, wisdom, if you will, in healing to all their flesh. And it's, if I understand the Hebrew word here for, for flesh, it's not just talking about, you know, our, our skin, our our. our outer shell, if you will, but, but it, it, it includes um, our mental abilities, our emotions, if you will, our spirituality. Uh, it, it encompasses everything that is about us, and so they can be healing to everything that we are. They will be of benefit to us. Notice verse 23, though. Now we come back to the heart. Keep your heart with all vigilance, for from it flow the springs of life. Okay, I'm using the English Standard 
version here. Uh, some of your versions might say, above all else. Okay, above all else, uh, guard your heart or, or keep your heart. It's almost like he's saying, okay, this is the most important one, though. Your heart, that, that, that center part of you, uh, where you keep the things that are very, very important. Above all else, keep your heart with all vigilance, for from it flow the springs of life. Okay? Um, I, this is a reminder, I believe, of, of some of the things that Jesus said. Okay? Uh, turn your Bibles to Mark. Mark chapter 7, we're going to begin in verse 14. But notice what Jesus says here. Mark chapter 7, verse 14. He says, And he called the people to him again and said to them, Hear me, all of you, and understand. There is nothing outside a person that by going into him can defile him. But the things that come out of a person are what defile him. Did, did you see it? Okay, did you hear it? He said, hear me. Ah, does that sound like our proverb writer a little bit? All of you, and understand. Okay, you will gain wisdom if you hear, if you listen. Okay, uh, incline your ear is another way that Jesus could have said that. Okay, verse 17. And when he had entered the house and left the people, his disciples asked him about the parable. And he said to them, then are you also without understanding? Do you not see that whatever goes into a person from outside cannot defile him, since it enters not his heart, but his stomach, and is expelled? Thus he declared all foods clean. And he said, What comes out of a person is what defiles him. For from within, out of the heart of man, come evil thoughts, sexual immorality, theft, murder, adultery, coveting, wickedness, deceit, sensuality, envy, slander, pride, foolishness. All these evil things come from within, and they defile a person. What we keep in our heart is so important, because what is in our heart is what comes out what people see. People can tell by the way that we talk. They can tell by the way that we treat people. They can tell maybe by the way we spend our money uh, what is truly within us, what is important to us, what, what is within our heart. And so the proverb writer and Jesus as well say it's important what we have inside of us because what we have inside, that's what's going to come out. And if it is evil, people are going to see that. And it's going to be easy to see. So the proverb writer, back in Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 23, says, Keep your heart, or above all else, guard your heart, for from it flow the springs of life. Okay, notice verse 24. Something so important, so needed today. Put away from you crooked speech, and put devious talk far from you. Wow, there's, there's many verses that, that we could use that would go along right here with, with, with this proverb. But I think it speaks uh, loud and clear, especially for even our day. Put away from you crooked speech. Okay, Speech that is not righteous. Speech that is not holy. Speech that, that Jesus himself would not use. Uh, put devious talk away from you. Okay? Uh, what did our parents used to tell us? If you can't say something nice, don't say anything at all. Okay, there's, there's wisdom there, right? How many times do we get in trouble for the words that we use? How many times do we get in trouble for the words that we use? How many times do we get in trouble for the words that we use? Whether they are spoken words uh, through the mouth, or, or on a phone conversation, or through a video, or, you know, through a text message, or a Facebook message, or a tweet, 
or Instagram or anything else that, that we could come up with. There are so many ways for us to get ourselves in trouble uh, this day and time. And it's very easy to do. Um, I'm not quite sure exactly what the science behind it is, but I know my wife tells me sometimes that that um, in a text message, it is so easy uh, to get the meaning of a text wrong. Um, for some reason, I want to... I'm not even going to quote uh, a percentage of how often that happens because I really don't know exactly. But but how many times have you read a message from somebody and you go, what? Are they angry? Are they mad? And then you talk to the person and like, no, I was happy. I was joyous or I was just making a comment. And, you know, it's it's so easy in our day of time to, to confuse things. So we got to be careful what we say. In, in any form that we are doing it, we have to be careful of what comes out of our mouths. Once again, in the times that we are living in, I think that that is very important. Be careful what you say. Give thought to it. Use wisdom before uttering out meaningless words. Okay, so, so, so there, was, there was the mouth. Verse 25 let your eyes look directly forward and your gaze be straight before you. Oh, I like this one. Uh, talking about the eyes. Let your eyes look directly forward. Okay, when, when, when you're looking directly forward, you're paying attention to what is coming up. Uh, does it ever scare you if you are in a car with someone who is driving and they're constantly looking somewhere else? Okay. Um, I've, I've had some friends, especially when I was younger, uh, we would be having a conversation and they'd be driving and they would look at you, you know, and, and, and okay, great. Eye contact. Very good. You're, you're listening. Great. No, not while you're driving though. Listen while looking at the road ahead of you. Don't be looking at me going like this. You can't see with your left ear out the windshield and, and tell what's coming. Here's the proverb writer. Okay, He says, keep your focus. Keep going towards that goal. Okay, If your goal is wisdom, make a straight line for it. Okay, don't lose sight of it. And your gaze be straight before you. I think that that's one of the things that Satan tries to do to us so often is distract us. Hey, over here. Ooh, ooh. Have you seen this over here? Oh, you're going straight towards God. Woo -hoo. Can I distract you? Can I get you to come this way a little bit? Can I get you to where you're maybe you're just veering a little ways off? And if you're distracted for long enough, you're on a totally different path. So here's the proverb writer saying, let your eyes look directly forward. Keep your eyes on the goal. Keep your eyes on what is important. Ah, verse 26. Ponder the path of your feet. Then all your ways will be sure. Ponder the ways of your feet. Or, or some of your versions might say, make level. Okay, if you make something level, then you're not going to most likely trip over something. Uh, but if we think about the path that our feet are going to take, uh, we're ready for what's going to come, right? Oh, yeah. Uh, one of my favorite sports movies is Cool Runnings, okay, about the Jamaican bobsled team uh, that, that took place. Uh, this movie came out, I think, about 93 or so. Might be dating myself since I graduated high school in 93. But a uh, wonderful movie, and, and in this movie, you got four men from Jamaica uh, that were not bobsledders, but three of them had been uh, sprinters, and, and they weren't able to go to the Summer Olympics, so they decided to become a bobs bobsled team, okay? And the one that is the leader, he ends up being the driver, and, and there's a scene in the movie where the other three are out to dinner and re relaxing a little bit at the Olympics. But he's in his hotel room and he has photographs of all the turns uh, that are going to be on the track, memorizing each one. Okay, when I come to this turn, 
What do I need to do? Do I need to go high? Do I need to go low? Um, how do I need to approach this turn to make sure that that we go through the course as fast as possible, but also that it keeps me and my teammates safe to where we're not flipping over our bobsled and, and could seriously injure ourselves as well. So, so he's pondering and he's thinking about it. And that's what I think about with this verse. Um, the young person that ponders the path of their feet, they're, they're thinking about it. They're using understanding and wisdom in this walk of life, okay? Where am I going? What do I want to do? What kind of person do I want to be? What kind of heart do I want to have? What kind of speech am I going to use? How are people going to view me when they see me? Where are my eyes going to be? Am I going to listen? Am I going to be talking? What's going to happen? Ponder the path of your feet, then all your ways will be sure. So if we know what direction to go, and we have a game plan in mind, then all your ways will be sure. Hmm. Uh, verse 27, we'll end our study this evening. It says, do not swerve to the right or to the left. Turn your foot away from evil. So, so these last two verses, uh, talking about the feet. Do not swerve to the right or to the left. Turn your foot away from evil. Okay? So as we're making that straight path, as we're pondering um, the path of our feet, don't veer either to the right or to the left, because when we do that, it keeps us away from where we need to be going. But, but, but keep your path straight. But then he says, I do want you to turn your foot, though, away from evil. If you see that you are headed towards evil, turn your foot. Go away from it. Avoid it uh, at all cost. Okay? Do you ever do that? Driving your car down the road, something's in the road. Uh, do you just try to hit it full on? Well, it might depend on the vehicle that you have. If you have a big pickup truck with a nice cattle guard on it, uh, maybe you're one of those people that goes, oh yeah, I can hit that. And I can have some fun with that. Uh, but if you're like me and you don't have one of those and you have a car and, and you're like, ah, that could destroy my car, I need to avoid that. Okay? Um, good advice. Good wisdom. Uh, do not swerve to the right or to the left. Turn your foot away from evil. So I hope maybe one of the things that we can get from this, maybe the proverb writer is trying to get across to us as well, is, is to use everything that God has given us to gain wisdom. Okay, Don't just depend upon your ears or your eyes or your mouth or your feet or your heart or your flesh. Use everything to gain it, to hold on to it, to treasure it. Because it will be a benefit to us. Once again, I want to, you know, offer a blessing uh, and hope that God blesses you through the rest of this week. I uh, pray that, that you'll be surrounded by good people that will encourage you uh, in your words, in your actions, the way that you listen, uh, the paths that, that you take. Okay, let us pray. Holy Father, Lord, thank you for this time and your word uh, to be able to look at, at the, the manual, uh, the roadmap that you have given us. And, and Father, I pray that we can gain wisdom from this study and, and from the book of Proverbs, Father. Father, may we apply these things to our lives. May we search out wisdom with everything that we are, Father. And may we take a direct path towards righteousness and towards holiness because we know that that will lead us straight to you. And Father, that's what you desire of us. Father, we pray that you will keep us from temptation. We pray that you will protect us from the evil one. And Father, we pray that for our world right now as well. Uh, Father, please bring healing to our country and to our land, uh, both from the virus, 
but but also with the uh, racial tensions that are going on and political tensions and, and all the other things that are, are causing us to be at odds with each other. Father, help us to use wisdom. Father, to you be the glory, to you be the honor, to you be the praise forever and ever. It is in your Son, Jesus Christ, holy name we do pray. Amen. God blessed. Have a great week. I'll see you next week.